Hello, my name's TSW and in this video I'll be explaining everything you need to know about the High Warlord Nagentus encounter. Nagentus is the first boss in the Black Temple. He has 3.8 million HP and an 8 minute enrage timer. Like all Black Temple bosses, the DPS requirement to beat the enrage timer is low and staying alive is key, particularly from Nagentus's tidal burst which I will speak more on later. Nagentus is a one phase fight. He hits around 4k on plate with debuffs and can crush above 7000. Needlespine. There are two components to Needlespine, the initial 2.6 to 3k physical damage to three random targets in a cone shape and an additional 2.4k resistible frost damage to anyone within 6 yards of these targets. Therefore, the rage should spread 360 degrees around Nagentus to avoid Needle Spine's cone and stand 6 yards apart to avoid the AoE splash frost damage. Make sure healers are evenly distributed throughout the raid so everyone can get healed. Impaling Spine Nagentus will remain hitting his primary focus but quickly target another raider and hit them for 4.5 to 5k physical damage. The target is stunned and has a 30 second dot dealing 2750 damage every 3 seconds or until the spine is looted from the player which removes the dot. Looting this spine will place a Nagenta spine into your bags. Impaling spine has a 20 second cooldown. Your raid needs to be mindful of who gets impaling spine. The clue being when Nagenta targets someone who isn't the tank. The target of the spine is laying on the floor and a spine object is sticking out of their body. Deadly boss mod marks this player with a skull. Someone nearest to the player should move over and click the spine and then move back to their original position. Letting your raid know on voice comms you have the spine can be peace of mind for the raid leader so they know someone is ready to throw during Tidal Shield. Tidal Shield Nagentus becomes immune to all damage and regenerates around 15,000 health a second. This shield must be broken by a player throwing Nagentus spine by first targeting Nagentus and throwing the spine. When the shield breaks, the entire raid takes 8,500 frost damage from Tidal Burst. Tidal shield is used every 60 seconds on cooldown. Raid healing needs to be on point in order to have everyone above 8500 HP quickly. However, don't let the fact that Nagentus' health regenerates during Tidal Shield rush you into throwing the spine. 15,000 health regenerated a second isn't worth the additional deaths in most cases. Feel free to take your time. Because Nagentus is immune to all damage, this is the perfect time for players to first aid, health stone and otherwise self heal or heal others. Players who struggle to reach 8500 health can be power word shielded by priests or use nightmare seeds to survive the damage. But this needs to be identified before the fight starts. But with the low damage requirement for this boss, swapping out low stamina gear for high stamina is the safest bet. PvP gear here can work wonders, as well as just any random gear you can get your hands on and throw a few stamina gems in, if you really need it. Nagentus still melees the tank during Tidal Shield, but stops using Needle Spine, so there's no additional AoE during this time. When the raid is healed, one of the players with Nagentus' spine needs to throw it. There should always be multiple players with a spine as Nagentus throws out more spines than necessary, but only one spine throw is required. You can macro slash use Nagentus spine or just click it out of your bags with Nagentus as your target. Ensure you have bag space as well. Raid setup. This is a solo tank fight, so the majority of the damage is going straight into your tank. Five to seven healers, Six being the sweet spot, five if you're in a pumper raid, and seven if you are having consistent deaths due to Tidal Burst's 8,500 damage. And then fill the rest of the raid with DPS. If you have two melee groups in your raid, you may see noticeable damage taken from Needle Spine and its AoE, as there'll be more players grouped together behind the boss. Now I'm going to go through the three main roles of the raid. Tank, 
healer and DPS to cover key mechanics to consider. The key takeaways as a tank. As the solo tank for this encounter, a fair bit of damage is being directed straight on the main tank. However, as the first boss of this raid, it's not huge. Remember, Nagenta still melees during Tidal Shield, and get ready to use a cooldown when the shield is broken, as Tidal Burst will hit you for 8,500 on top of any melee swings you are taking. This is the most likely point for a tank to die. I advise using Iron Shield full time unless you can guarantee survival, in which case swap for a Haste or Mana Pot as Paladin. The key takeaways as a healer. Healing assignments should be used to get the most out of your healers. Strong, consistent heals are required at all times on the tank. Damage in general isn't high but can spike, particularly when the tidal burst hits the whole raid for 8,500 damage. The tank needs precast heals to consistently survive this. A 3 second countdown for throwing the Genesis spine to break the tidal shield is a great way to land a max rank holy light on the tank as soon as the shield is broken. You could also be assigned to healing the raid, in which case look out for impaling spine debuff if your raid is slow to pick up the spine, but ideally the spine is picked up quickly and the debuff isn't up for long. The vast majority of the raid healing is from Needle Spine and Needle Spine Explosion. The better spread out the raid is, the less AoE damage will be taken. There is significantly more raid healing than tank healing, however the tank is the most important person to keep alive as Nagentus is taunt immune and if the tank dies, it's a wipe. Key takeaways as a DPS. Nagentus is immune to all damage every 60 seconds, so use your cooldowns effectively and reapply any debuffs just before the tidal shield if you don't want them to fall off during this immunity, such as improved demo shout, insect swarm and scorpid sting. The same thing goes for maintaining buffs like battle shout during the DPS downtime. Melee will want to spread into two groups behind Nagentus in order to not take additional AoE damage from the Needle Spine. Ranged will want to spread out and ideally take no additional AoE damage, unless you go for a pairing up strategy in which every ranged person stacks as a pair, so no movement is required to loot a Nagentus Spine, but at the cost of sharing AoE damage from Needle Spine. I hope this video has been informative and if you enjoyed it please like, comment and subscribe for future content. Thank you.